Welcome, grade sevens. Welcome to our STEM Lockdown Digital School. It is so awesome to have you guys back again. I'm so happy to be here and I look forward to seeing you in a way every day. It is so good to have you. Please don't forget, you can email me if you have any questions, if you would like me to go over anything with regard to the content or anything we've done, you can email me at sheenamelody at gmail.com. Okay, so in that way I can help you and give you feedback or answer any questions that you might have. So welcome so much to our class today. I'm so happy to have you here. And shall we begin? Right. So can you believe it? We're halfway through week 10 already. Today we're going to do a bit of revision on language. I am focusing a bit more on homophones, homonyms, okay, and some proverbs and idioms. The other examples in language might come in now and then, but I am going to focus on more of right side of the word meanings, okay, because we haven't done a lot of that in our lessons. So to begin, we're going to do idioms and proverbs. So we often use these in our conversations. Sometimes we don't even realize that we're saying them or that we're using them. Now, you can't learn them separately because then it won't make sense. For example, if I just say rat or rat smell, it doesn't, it's not a complete whole as a phrase and it means nothing. You have to have the whole expression to, together to actually have a meaning. So what I've got is we've got 10 today. I don't know if you have heard of them before. You probably have and you probably say them without realizing that you do. So we have, I'm going to just go in order one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and read these for you before we do our, our activities. A bad egg, that means a worthless person, someone who is not good to be around. So they have a bad influence on you. We call them a bad egg. Like, She's a bad egg or he's a bad egg. And it's also someone who you cannot believe anything that they say. Okay. So that is that expression. Then we have a close shave. Close shave means it was a very narrow escape. Um, we, we say close shave because I don't know if you've you know somebody, maybe your dad or your grandpa or someone in the family that has to shave so that they don't get a beard. And they have to shave very close to their skin to get all the hair off. And if they push too hard or too close, they can cut themselves. So it's got to be very careful. That's why they use that expression, a close shave, as narrow escape. A flash in the pan means one and only success. So you only have one thing that you, for example, let me put it this way. If you're an actor or actress and you have starred in a famous movie and your name has become famous because of that movie, but you've never ever starred in another one, you weren't successful in another one, then you were a flash in the pan. And your name eventually as an actor or actress gets forgotten because you only had that one success. It doesn't only refer to acting, I'm just using that as an example, as it's something we're all familiar with. Very good. Jonathan has an idiom for us. Hard nut to crack. Very good. So that would be, what would that mean, Jonathan? Hard nut to crack. Do you know the idiom? Do you know what it means? I'll give you a chance to, oh, there we go. Someone who's very tough. All right. Someone who's very tough or someone that you just cannot get through to. You just cannot um, get through their shell, their outer side. As you say, they're very tough and they don't let you see them in their weakness. Okay. Very good. Question, uh, not question, number four, wet blanket. Um, we've got a very good example there of Eeyore. 
And welcome, Itanzi. He is considered to be a wet blanket because he complains a lot and spoils other people's fun. So that would be a wet blanket. So if someone is always spoiling your fun and complains all the time when they're with you, they are a wet blanket. As for crows, flies. So you know, often when people talk about traveling, they say, as the crow flies, and they give a distance. That means basically, if you are not following a route on a road or a pathway, and you are actually could imagine yourself being a bird and flying from one place to another, that is the distance they are speaking about. As the crow flies. Yes, we are doing idioms and proverbs and figurative expressions. So any distance in a straight line from one place to another is a considered as the crow flies. Many places such the rural parts of England and Ireland, those are the rural means country. So in those parts, they still use this phrase, this expression. Face the music. Ooh, now that is a popular one. Face the music. If you do something wrong and your parents find out or your teacher finds out or someone in, in charge actually finds out and you are really like, can't believe you maybe made a mistake or did something wrong, etc. It's called face the music. You eventually have to go home, go back to school or go back wherever you had been before and face the music. In other words, you have to take the consequences of your action. So if you're at home and you are deciding, mommy and daddy's not here, I'm going to go jump on the bed because I don't have a trampoline and it's raining outside and you jump 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 and you crack the springs or you bend the springs by jumping or you crack the board, the bed board by jumping. Well, now, your parents are going to find out. So you are going to face the music and you are going to have to explain that you were doing something you shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. So that is what face the music means. In a nutshell, that is if you want to explain something very quickly and briefly, like you don't want to go into a long story about it, then you would explain it in a nutshell. The nutshells are very small. Okay. And the, the seed or the fruit or not fruit really, it's not inside of them, um, are smaller than the shells. So when we are trying to, for example, in science or in one of our content subjects, when we are trying to say something very briefly, we might say all in a nutshell or in a nutshell. Like water off a duck's back. Now, this one you will have heard definitely quite often. Okay. So if you are being you feel you've been okay. I maybe I'm going to use this because we are I am a teacher and you are learners. So I'm just going to use this. For example, if you go to a certain lesson or subject in a day and you feel that the teacher is always picking on you, someone might turn around and say to you, it's take it like water off the duck's back. Don't take it personally. They're probably hard on you because they know what you're capable of or they want you to do better. So then they would say to you, like water off a duck's back. Don't let it have any effect or reaction. Okay. If you're the kind of person that doesn't take offense and doesn't react and it doesn't affect you, you would be a person that would take things like water off a duck's back. All right. So that's another one. Welcome. It's okay if you're a little bit late. At least you are here. And it's not too long in the lesson anyway. We're doing idioms and Proverbs. So you're welcome. Jonathan has suggested uh, idiom deep pockets but short hands. Can you tell us what that means, Jonathan? Just 
So I'm going to let you type that out and then I'll read it as soon as you're done. The last two we've got out of the blue. So something happens out of the blue and then it's unexpected. Out of the blue refers to the sky. So for example, if this is a beautiful sunny day and suddenly there's raindrops but there's no clouds, the raindrops are coming out of the sky, which looks blue. So we use the expression out of the blue for something unexpected that you don't see coming. Okay, so Jonathan gave us a nice idiom. It's deep pockets, but short hands, which means a person who doesn't share. So in other words, deep pockets means you have deep pockets with lots of goodies in them. but Your hands are too short to reach. In other words, you don't really want reach to give or share to anyone else. It's actually a very good one, not a common one, but a very good one. Um, Hitanzi, a feather in one's cap, a feather in one's cap. What would you say in your own words what that means? Welcome, Katlejo. Okay, I'll let you put the answer there and then I'll explain to everybody. Ah, there you go. That was quick. It's an honor or achievement. That is absolutely right. So if a feather in your cap, it's an honor or achievement. I don't know if you've seen these graduation pictures of someone who's graduated and they have that special square hat and it's got a tassel out of it. That is representative of a feather in your cap. So that's representative of an achievement. Yeah, that's why they wear those, those hats as well. Smell a rat. That is to be suspicious. If you smell like something is not right, and you would smell a rat. We have now, those are idioms, okay? Now we have some proverbs. Proverbs are brief sayings, okay? That we have used over time. And how can, how can I explain it in a way to identify the difference between a proverb and an idiom? Would anybody like to try that before I explain it? Okay, so I'm seeing uh, Devang's, uh, Hitanzi's got quite a few, um, another one there, break us, the first to begin. Okay, so this is a tricky one. You might ask me, ma'am, how do I know if something's an idiom or proverb? Because they both have a meaning that means more than the actual words that are being used. They're just used in a different way way. For example, an idiom. If I look at an idiom, let's go back and look. Quickly. It says like water off a duck's back, smell a rat. Those aren't generally the way we speak literally. You don't literally smell a rat. You don't literally face the music, okay? So literally they don't make sense, but figuratively they do. However, a proverb does make sense figuratively and literally. Actions speak louder than words. That in literal sense does make sense. And the meaning behind it is figurative. Words mean nothing without an action. Okay. Right, so we have a suggestion here by Hitanzi where an idiom like break the ice, it's not like you do the thing. So you don't actually break the ice exactly. So you don't literally do it. Proverbs, you can do it exactly. That's a very sim simple and brief way of putting it. Thank you so much, Hitanzi. Well done. Good job. Very good. Now, idioms can almost be impossible to understand if you if you don't use it regularly if you didn't grow up with it if it's not part of your actual language yes you get a pet pet oh don't be sad 
<laughs> you get a pet pet. Usually I have Tiana that pops up and reminds me about the pet pets. Um, so thank you so much for that, Itansi. You definitely get a pet. Awesome job. Well done. Good job. I'm sorry about that. You earned it. And actually, um, who else deserves a pet pet that's been help that's been making suggestions as well as Jonathan? Proverbs, Gaia as well. Proverbs have more humor than idioms. Um, I think. I think it's I think you're on the right track, but I think it's the other way round, maybe. But I think that sometimes games are quite funny. The proverbs are quite like serious. They're like teaching you a moral. All right. So um yeah, I think you're on the right track. Eh? If we say uh let's look at the, you know the African tales, okay, before I digress, the African tales that we do. That, that we were doing in the beginning of this um, term, we were talking about that a lot of them had morals to them. So they were trying to teach us something. Proverbs are very much like that as well. Okay, so the, they're kind of like, often you'll find a proverb in a tale. Um, for example, the lion and the mouse, it will end with a proverb, not an idiom. Okay, so we have a friend in need is a friend indeed. So a true friend always stands by you. Birds of a feather flock together. Literally, that is true. It does literally happen. It also means people with the same interests belong together. God helps those who help themselves. Literally, yes, God helps those who help themselves also means God will help you if you make an effort to help yourself. Next one we have, practice makes perfect. The hard work and perseverance will bring you success. That's why we practice a lot of our things over and over and over again. And then we have, you cannot have your cake and eat it. So, yeah, you can't have everything you want. Usually when you get a big cake in the house, you have to share it. All right. So very good job, guys. Do you understand a bit better the difference between an idiom and a proverb? An idiom is funny. It has a figurative expression and meaning, but not literally. A proverb has a meaning, but it also has a literal meaning. So it has a figurative meaning and it has a literal meaning. And it's usually used for a moral or teaching a lesson. Okay. So we also have another word for a proverb, and we call it an age. It is an old English word. And it, an age is a short saying. It's very old. It's been passed on through the times. And it's accepted as the truth. So it's like a statement. But it's used since time gone by. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So you cannot have everything. Once you've eaten your cake, you can't have any more. So you cannot have it both ways. So we call that also an age. So you've learned something hopefully new today. So pat on the back. For all those who shared their idioms with me and suggestions of proverbs. Give me a smiley face if you're happy to get your pat on the back and so that I know that you're there. Got very quiet. Ah, there we go. That's better. Now we're talking. Here we go, pat, pat. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So here we have a nice description. If you want to write this down, you're more than welcome to because it's always good to have. If you already have it, that's cool too. So here we have the definition. What is an idiom? What is a proverb? What is an idiom? An idiom is a group of words in a fixed order, you have to be in that order, to convey a particular meaning is different from its own word. It's different from its literal meaning. A proverb is a simple short saying, expresses the truth of something, and it has a literal and a figurative meaning. Even if you go, this is actually a good example, the 
book of Proverbs in the Bible is actually a good example of what a proverb is. So absence makes the heart grow fonder. Literally, that is true. But it can also mean being away a long time from a person makes you appreciate them more. A picture can speak a thousand words. In other words, an image can tell a story better than in words. Okay, so there you have your examples. Now let's see what you know and what you remember. I'm going to give you the first half of a proverb and the second half, and you need to connect it to its correct ending. Okay, so are you ready for this? So yeah, we have the first half of the proverb, the early bird. A bird in the hand, don't judge a book. Where there is a will, a picture speak, a patient dog. Now I have the second part. Is worth two in the bush, there is a way. A thousand words, gets the bone, catches the worm by its cover. I join number one with the rest of its sentence in the second column. So the early bird, what does it do? Very good, Gail. Well done. I'm going to wait for a few more. Very good, Itanzi. Very good. I'm just giving everybody a chance to share. So, right. The I don't know why I skipped the second one. For some reason, grade sevens, my animations today have not been working the way they should. Okay, so the early bird catches the worm. Well done. Pat on the back. Pat on the back. Number two, well done. For those who got this right, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Am I breaking up a lot? Uh, sorry about that. I do not know why. So very, very good. Early bird catches the worm. Pat on the back. Well done. So now don't judge a book. Ooh, looks like a lot of us know that one. I'm more well done. Pat on the back there. Good job. Don't judge a book. Uh, it's cover. Very good. Where there is a will. Aha. Uh -huh. Very good, Itanzi. Well done, Pat Pat. Pat Pat. <laughs> good job. Where there is a will, there is a. Yes. Patty Pat Pat. Very good. So where there is a will, there is a way. Very good. Question or number five, a picture speaks. Very good, Hitanzi. Very good, Amo. Nice, pat, pat, pat. Very good. Let's see if I've also got it right. Hope so. Ooh, phew. A picture speaks a thousand words. Well done, Go. Pat, pat. Well done. The patient dog. Hmm. Very good. It is. It is easier to find because it's the last one there, but it's not actually a very common one. So the patient dog gets the bone. Well done, pat pat. Give yourselves a pat pat on the back there. Awesome job. You're doing very well. So now that we've learned some about well, proverbs and idioms. Let's take a brain break and do something that you're very familiar with. Prepositions. Okay, as you know, prepositions tell you where something is, its place, um, its relationship to one thing and another. So the computer and the table. Where is the computer in relation to the table? It's on the table. Now, sometimes I have often found that some prepositions can be used incorrectly, especially the two words between and among. 
Now, when you use the word between, remember you must only use it when there's one and two, so two people, or two things, or two objects. You use the word between. Think of between and two. Between. Among is more than two. We use the word among when there is more than two people or objects or things. Okay. So as an example, something that is shared between two persons is something that is shared between two things or people. We use the among when it's shared between several persons. The second one that I do find we have sometimes mistakes is in. My money is in my wallet. I jump into the swimming pool. You can't. Into is going with your action. Okay, you're jumping. I jump into the pool. Okay, so you're going into something. Whereas in, it's the place of something. All right. So money is in my wallet. That's its place. For a swimming pool or for a jumping action, I jump into the swimming pool. Okay. Your money can't go by itself into your wallet. You can jump by yourself into the swimming pool. So remember, when we use those two words, you also see that it makes sense. Yeah. So we have prepositions of place where, where, you just ask where something is. Sky is, where is the sky? Above the earth. Where is her ability? It is above her ability. Where did she walk? Across the road. It is better to use across the road than it is to say over the road. Because over is generally something that goes over something else. You can go over and under something. But you cannot go across the road and go under the road unless it's a highway. But then you would say highway. So generally when you use the word over when there isn't an under, you'd rather use the word across. Yes, don't say jump in the pool. Say jump into the pool. Okay, because you're going, it's a movement. You're moving. It's a moving position. You're moving towards something that's so into. Okay, the money isn't moving towards the wallet, it's just in the wallet. It's its place. Okay, so there we go. You can see some good example. This is between. Between you and me, very good. It's two people. She is in grade 10, yes, because she can't physically move. You can't be moving into grade 10. So you don't say into, you say in. Very good. Rises were given across the board, yes, because you never give them under the board. So you would rather say across instead of using the word over. So very good. I'm glad you're understanding this. Pat, pat. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Pat, pat, pat. Pitty, pat, pat. You guys are awesome. Okay, so for the next few that I have, number four, you would ask yourself, where did she stand? She stood against the wall. Where did she run? She ran around the hockey field. Where is the dustbin? The dustbin is behind me. So for place, you will ask where. Okay, now in my second one. Now we have a good example of beside. We have Jojo, the monkey, and Thug, the elephant. So Jojo is beside Thug. So this is talking about his place. Now, when you are talking about apart from, Jojo has many friends apart from. From Thud, or Jojo has many friends other than Thud, you can use the word besides. Jojo has many friends besides Thud. Okay, so those are the two different ways you use them. So in the first one, he is physically beside his friend. 
and you have preposition of time. Now, this is, I know that sometimes there's confusion of when to use at and for, etc. What I would suggest you need to do is say it out loud and also see if it makes sense. Okay. So I'm going at four o'clock. She is at work. Rachel was absent from school day. So those are your prepositions from off time. Okay. And there are more prepositions that we just use a lot, like for places, for something, for somebody. I arrive at Rubyville. I arrive in Cape Town. So at is a small place. Look at that carefully. When you arrive at a small place or a small area, you use at. When you arrive in a big place, like a country or a city, you say in. Okay. I am disappointed in the test. So you're disappointed in something. I am disappointed with John. That's when we're talking about somebody. So you use in when you're disappointed with a thing and with when you're disappointed with a person. So with is generally referred to a person and in to a thing. Okay. Now, are you ready to practice? I see Hitanzi has given me so many examples and I am reading them, Hitanzi. Don't worry, get on the back for you. Before we go to the next activity, I'm going to read them for everybody. So Hitanzi has a few suggestions for amongst and between. This is between you and me, so between two people. The books were divided amongst the children. So that's more than two or among the children. There is much talent amongst the teachers, very good, or among the teachers, good. We met at the airport. So the airport is a small place, so you can say, all right. Very good. You are on a roll, Hitanzi. Yeah? Okay, so now let's see everybody practice. Are you ready? We want to earn some pet pets. Okay, here we go. Circle. So I'm going to do the circling and you're going to tell me which word to circle. Okay, preposition that best completes the sentence. Number one, my brother pointed down or up towards the plane in. The sky. All righty, here we go. Now you also got to check that I got it right. Okay, you have to check that your teacher got it right. See if you're awake. Uh, remember that. We all got to earn our pets here today. Yay, we got a patty pat pat. Awesome. My brother pointed up towards the plane in the sky. Good job, grade sevens. Well done. Right, let's do the next one. I'm so excited now. I leaned against or down the wall because my legs were tired. Hmm, let's have a look here. Aha. Very good. Very good. Ah, yes, that is excellent. Let's see if I was as good as you. We all get patty pat pats. I leaned against the wall because my legs were tired. Yes, patty pat pats. Awesome. You guys are brilliant. Well done. Good job. Okay, let's do the next one. We're on a roll now. I sat between, oh, be careful for this one. I sat between or among my two friends during assembly. Let's see who is awake. There we go. Excellent. Pat, pat, pat. I sat between my two friends during assembly. Well done. Good job. Ooh, that's a challenging one. My father looked beyond or across the cruise ship in time. What do you think that one's going to be? I think we're going to have a few mixed reviews here.
Now remember, across is used when you are moving somewhere. You're moving, you're walking across the road. You're running across the field. Now, this father is in a ship. He's looking. So he's not walking or moving or able. He's not driving the ship. Okay. So we would say, well done. We would say beyond. Pat, pat, pat. Very good. So maybe there was something on the horizon, like a whale jumping in the ocean or in the air, and he looked beyond the cruise ship just in time to actually see this event. Okay, well done. Good job. That was a, that was a tricky one. Okay, now, I received an email from or at my best friend. What will we say? Good job. I don't even need to wait for this one. You even have time to put little emojis. Well done. Patty Pat Pat. Well done. I received an email from my best friend. Pat on the backs. Pat on the backs for you. You've earned them. Righty. Are you ready? According from, according to this recipe, you must just, you must add the milk. Apologies. You must add the milk. So according from or to this recipe, you must add the milk. Ooh, that's making me hungry, actually. Especially Hitanzi putting pieces of cake on the chat group. You really want to make my tummy roar, don't you? Okay, okay, let's see here. According. Why is it not working? Ooh, well done. Pat, pat, pat. According to the recipe, you must add the milk. Well done. Okie dokie, let's try the next one. Are you angry at with me? Are you angry at with me? Hmm, this is a challenge, guys. This is this is a challenge. Hmm, because remember, okay, I'm not actually going to give you a clue. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Oh, Pabalo, are you awake or what? Yes. I think, Hitanzi, you realized, you realized that's good. That's good for self-correction. Are you angry with me? Remember when it's a person, it's with? Okay. So, are you angry with me? Now, if it wasn't a person, if it was an object, if, if you stubbed your toe on the bed, on the table, you might say, are you angry at the table? That would be an object. See, but because it's a person, we use with. Okay. Righty. Pat, pat, if you've learned something there, and pat, pat, if you also realized what it was. Well done. The second one I have given you, not on purpose, we arrived in Johannesburg on Sunday. We arrived at Johannesburg on Sunday. Is my answer correct? Does teacher get a pat pat? Oh, uh, why? I'm wrong. Why am I wrong? Is it at? Why do you say it's at? Tell me why. Someone's remembering what I taught earlier in the slide, didn't you? Why would that be wrong? Okay. At, you can say at, you arrived at a place. What did we say about the size of places? Well, Joburg is a big place. Remember that. Joburg is a big place. So for big places, we use the word in. Remember what I said? We use the word in. For example, you can fly 
into Joburg. You can fly in Joburg. You can arrive in Joburg. However, if it's a small place like an airport, you would say at. We arrived at the airport on Saturday. But for a big place, you can say in. Are you with me? So remember the previous slide. We said you can use the word in, all right, when it's a big city or a big place or a country. You can use the word at if it's a small place like an airport or a shopping mall or a school. Yeah. Any questions? Do you understand now? Guess what? You all get a pet pet for trying. Well done. Pet pet. Now, there are some situations that a teacher might give that to you and correct it, because in some situations, we do know that you can use both words. This, explain, this situation, I can explain to you why are different. And because I can explain that to you, you and try and remember it that way, okay? So I want you guys to do the best you can possibly do when you go back to school. I'm so proud of you already. Really, I am. I love this class so much. Okay, so now we're going to choose. This is probably the last which we're going to have time to do, but let's try and see if we can do it. Okay, we want to earn some facts. We're going to correct these sentences okay, by changing the prepositions. All right, so you need to, there is a preposition already in the sentence. It is one here. But it is either incorrect or we need to leave out the word to make it correct. So we either have to change the preposition or we have to leave out some words to make it sound good. All right, so let's try this. It's a nice little challenge. When would you like to discuss about this matter? That actually sounds funny. When would you like to discuss about this matter? I think there needs to be a word left out. Don't you? Which word do you think I should leave out? So for number one, you just need to give me the word or the preposition. You don't have to type out the whole sentence because I know there's not much time. Okay, so when would you like to discuss this matter? When, okay. All right. Now, we're going to try a few options. I'm going to read some of your suggestions. Okay, let's listen very carefully. When would you like to discuss about this matter? That's how it stands on the page. This is the suggestion. When would you like to discuss this matter? Which one sounds better? Very good, Jonathan. Very good. So we're leaving out. I don't know why. There we go. We leave out the word about. We don't need it in there. Because we are asking a question. So you can leave out when, but that's not what problem is it's not wrong if you leave out when it's just that it is not the actual problem with the sentence you can say when would you like to discuss the matter or would you like to discuss the matter but in this instance it is a word that shouldn't be there because it sounds like really wrong so that's what we'll look at there. so you get a pat pat on the back good effort now our time is running out, okay? We don't have time left. So I'm going to continue this in another lesson because you guys are doing so well and I think we are learning something, okay? So I'll give you all a pat in the back. Did you have a good day? Is there anything that I need to know, any feedback you want to give me, anything at all? Please just type it up in the chat box. Please let me know. Okay, so that I can help you better. Well done. You all get a pat pat.
in the back. I'm so proud of you. And same time, same place tomorrow, okay? Bye, guys.